Well, looky here, Sonny. If you have something to say, get on with it. 150 years ago, George Boole published a work in mathematics that touches your life a hundred times a day. It's often called Boolean algebra, but in actual fact, it's just one subset of Boolean algebra, binary algebra. George's work helped fuse logic and mathematics, sort of gave a shot in the arm to both. Binary logic is so simple and elegant that people who work with it often want to share it with people who've never even heard of it. My own introduction to George Boole's work came when I was about eight. My father sat me down and explained it with great enthusiasm. When it was all done, I was really impressed, but I didn't have a clue what it would be good for. Since then, computers, digital watches, and socks that play You Light Up My Life have hit the market. They're all thanks to George Boole's little work. If you want to look up George's paper, it was called An Investigation of the Laws of Thought on Which Are Founded the Mathematical Theories of Logic and Probabilities, published in 1854. I uh, haven't actually read it myself, but I know what it's become. George's algebra is based on this. Everything has to be reduced to true and false. There's no gray area allowed. True and false can also be stated as black and white, yes and no, or one and zero. We're going to stick to one and zero. So one is true and zero is false. Like any good set of mathematics, Boolean algebra has operators like plus, minus, multiply, and divide. Boolean operators are and, or, and not. Stop sweating. I promised this was going to be simple and elegant. Here goes the first operator. Not. Not one is zero. Hard to believe this little concept changed the world. The symbol for not is a little line on top, so this reads not a. It has some company. The second operator is and. One and one are one. Now, this might not be what they told you in school, but school never tells the whole truth about anything. There are some more aspects to the AND operator. 1 and 0 are 0. And 0 and 1 are 0. This is so simple that it appears stupid. To see AND better, you need to make a truth table. The logic symbol for AND is this, and this is the truth table. Now, and can have any number of factors. If there were four factors, the truth table would read like this. See, because now we need 16 entries to show all of the possible combinations of A, B, C, and D. But there's one overriding truth that saves having to puzzle over the table. And requires all of its inputs to be true for the result to be true. In all other cases, the result is false. The OR operator is a little less picky than AND. If any of the inputs is true, the result is true. Like the AND, the OR can have any number of inputs. Its fundamental truth is that all of the inputs have to be false for the result to be false. So OR is the logical mirror image of AND. Next, there is no next. That's it. That's all the binary logic you need to build a $50 million supercomputer. The AND and OR thingamajigs are called gates in computer talk and the true and false are the presence or absence of a voltage. Oh yeah, to round out your bag of gates, this is the symbol for a not gate. There's also a handy little devil called the exclusive OR. The exclusive OR can only have two inputs, and its result is true only if the inputs are different. You don't really need the exclusive OR, because you can build it from ands, ors, and nots. By now, our first-time Acme viewers have switched to the other channels and discussed but I know that all three of the loyal viewers are expecting some sort of a payoff for sitting through all this. So we're going to build something useful with the gates. Here are four knots and two ands. Consider these red push buttons false if they're not pushed. The push button inputs are negated by knots. So one input of each and is true. If I push this button, the output of the knot goes false. Nothing else happens, because the other input of the AND is false already. That's courtesy of the NOT at this AND's output. This other AND gate has two true inputs, so its output is true, and the NOT following changes that true to false, and it's that false which is keeping the first AND off. This circuit's symmetrical, though. There's no reason that all the situations can't be reversed. 
When I push this button, the AND result will be false, and the rest is history. This configuration of gates is capable of remembering. You might know it as static random access memory, or static RAM. So at this point, you might be thinking that this is an elaborate Acme April Fool's joke. Sure, it all seems logical, but can you really build a computer with gates? Yep. You just have to remember that 256,000 of these can fit on a chip smaller than a thumbtack head. It costs a couple of dollars. Now, just to show you I'm not BSing, this is a catalog of simple gates and computer chips. See? Truth tables. Logic diagrams. Any chip manufacturer would be happy to put any or all of the chips in this book on one big chip for you, wired in whatever way you like. Don't make any mistakes, though. The first one is very expensive. Once you're set up, the second one will only cost you a couple of cents. Once you get your head properly buried into Boolean algebra, you find it has all sorts of neat tricks. For instance, if you not all of the inputs to an AND gate, it becomes an OR gate. Scratch out your own truth tables if you don't believe me. The other week I came across a cartoon in an electronics magazine that made me smile. And since it relied on George Boole's notation, I didn't have anyone to share it with. But now that all three loyal Acme viewers are such Boolean whizzes, I do have someone to share it with. Uh, I don't know.